All right, so now to uh, finish off, I'm gonna give at least an outline of an example. I'm not gonna do all the details. Um, but so uh, in this example, we're gonna suppose that we have a normal population. Um, and let's say we uh, know the variance, population, uh, known variance, uh, I'll just call it sigma squared, um, but some um, unknown mean. And in this case, the um, you know the the parameter that we're actually trying to find is going to be the mean, of course. Okay. Now we'll have um, this case of the uh, two-sided alternative where we're uh, looking at the null hypothesis being that um, the mean has a certain value, theta equals mu equals some fixed value, and hypothesis number one, the alternative hypothesis, that it doesn't have that value two-sided alternative. Okay, so now, in this case, the um, the likelihood function, which uh, formally looks is really the, the probability density, um, it looks like, um, um, so this is a, remember, where, where, when I write x here, I'm really talking about um, a vector x1 through xn. And so we're uh, looking at a product of, uh, of these uh, normal distributions. Um, so we have uh, uh, our guy looks something like this, e to the um, uh, minus one over uh, two sigma squared um, times the sum of, um, of my, uh, of my uh, x, xi minus mu's, which I got from multiplying all those individual um, uh, density functions. So, okay, so now um, what, what do we then need to do? So, you know, we have, um, as I was calling it before, the kind of um, uh, numerator expression. Um, so the, the numerator is going to be, so given x is gonna be um, the maximum over the mu's of this L of, um, of that. So, so in fact, you know, it's, um, you know, one, Oh, oh, and I should say, excuse me, the, the numerator and the denominator, they're both these um, maxima, but on the one case, I'm looking at the ones such that my uh, null hypothesis, on the other hand, I'm looking for, uh, for just all under, under either hypothesis, H0 or H1. Okay, right. So, um, so it's either to maximize the first one, the null hypothesis is a specific value, so the maximum is that just that one value. And so this one, um, you know, we have just this uh, same expression where uh, where the mean is given by um, where the mean is given by mu naught. And in the uh, alternative hypothesis, well, I need to find a value. Um, for um, I need to find a value for mu that makes this expression uh, maximum. So what am I going to plug in for mu that uh, maximizes this expression? You know, you can do a little calculus and figure it out. Um, uh, it turns out to be um, to be the the sample mean, um, a little x bar. Um, you know, which is perhaps not a surprise. Um, so this maximum occurs when mu uh, is equal to x bar, in which case you get um, sigma xi minus x bar squared. And that is my, uh, my denominator. Okay, so then what do, we, what do we then have? We have that our, our actual um, statistic um, is this ratio, the numerator over the denominator guys. Um, and so, you know, that, um, that first bunch goes away, but I just have, um, you know, e to the minus one over two sigma squared sum of these xi's minus mu naught um, over e to the minus one over two sigma squared sum of um, xi minus, uh, there's a square there or there. Um, Okay, yeah, I think I have that right. 
All right. Um, so now the uh, the now the next thing we would want to do is uh, simplify this a bit, and um, you know, okay. So I'm. It's been a long day. I don't. I don't really feel like um, simplifying it. Um, I've done my algebra elsewhere, and um, and I'm just going to write the answer. So when you when you do this, and you do a bit of a manipulation, you can write this as n over two sigma squared x minus um, mu naught squared. Okay, so uh, oh, whoops, I'm sorry. This is um, yeah x bar minus mu naught squared. Okay, so you have to kind of play around with this a bit, but um, but that's what you get at the end of the day. Okay, so. Uh, so, you know, there's kind of like a dot, 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 dot right there. Okay, so then um, there was, of course, another dot, dot, dot when I actually computed this maximum. Okay. So, um, but what does that tell us? That tells us that our test has the form. I mean, we know it's going to be um, lambda less than or equal to k in the critical region. Um, and lambda for us is this exponential guy. So if I were to um, um, kind of write this, um, write this a little differently, you know, I can take logarithms, um, then I have to negatize both sides, which flips the direction of the inequality, then, um, you know, multiply and divide by that sigma squared in stuff. And uh, after, after the, you know, after a little bit of uh, manipulation, dot, 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 you get an expression that um, looks like x bar minus mu naught uh, squared is now bigger than or equal to um, some other value, uh, k. Uh, maybe I'll use k for something else. Let's call it c. Okay. And then, of course, that's, um, I could, by taking a square root, just write that as as that greater than or equal to, to k. And so this is um, the shape of the critical region of the test that um, that we would then find. All right. Now, um, so then to finish, we would just find a um, region such that the um, probability uh, x bar minus mu naught bigger than or equal to k um, given um, mu equals mu naught. So this is the probability of my type 1 error, the probability of being in the critical region, assuming the null hypothesis. And we'd want to make this equal to alpha, or at least less than or equal to alpha. But equal to alpha is what we can do in this case. And you know, we, we know how to do this. Um, um, now, um, interestingly, um, you know, something happened here which um, turns out to be um, kind of a, a bit more general than one might imagine, right? So our estimator um, really was this um, was this thing over here. That's that's how we got it. This this lambda was this thing, which is that, and I rewrote it down here, right? So our estimator as a random variable was e to the minus um, n over 2 sigma squared, um, really the, um, the sample mean thought of as a random variable, minus um, mu naught squared. Right, which is, um, if I wanted to write this a little bit differently, I have a minus a half of, um, well, you know, what's, what's inside this if I, if I kind of rearrange that, if I stick that n and sigma squared on the inside there, um, I'm looking at x bar minus mu naught uh, sigma divided by root n um, squared. And, um, right, so this thing inside here um, is my standard normal variable, and this whole thing is a, um, a chi-squared 1 variable with 1 degree of freedom. Um, and this is basically not a coincidence. Um, so this is a kind of a remarkable theorem. So the theorem says that under um, um, general 
hypotheses, um, the um, this um, likelihood ratio test for a um, uh, you know for a test of hypothesis with this kind of two-sided alternative alternative so you're kind of you have the null hypothesis saying that um, theta is some theta naught and the alternative hypothesis saying that theta is not equal to theta theta naught so this is the kind of test that we're looking at um, so gives an estimator We've described how to do it, um, capital lambda, such that if you look at minus twice the uh, logarithm of lambda, so you could see that if we did that over here, we'd be looking at this thing over here. Um, approaches a um, chi squared one distribution for large n. So it always looks kind of chi-squared one-like uh, as, as that gets big, uh, by, by which I mean that the uh, cumulative uh, distribution function for, um, for minus two L and lambda um, at every value X approaches the value of the um, chi-squared one distribution um, you know, as n goes to infinity. Okay, so this is kind of cool, you know, because it, because um, as you might imagine, it's it's a little bit uh, tricky for a very general thing to 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 really work with these um, likelihood ratio uh, test estimators. I mean, uh, statistics, because you know you have to like actually, you know say what happens when you maximize for all these values it's a little hard to work with um, I'll just uh, mention just for fun um, what are the what does general mean um, gosh I don't know if I actually feel like writing it down but let me just say so um, so what does general mean um, it means that um, that these variables um, that you're observing are IIDs um, let's say, uh, as always, with some, let's say they have the, some density function that I'll write as um, f of x theta, I should write it x i's, I guess, or something like that. Um, we want these to be uh, different if the thetas are different. So we should be able to distinguish thetas by these uh, density functions. So different thetas mean different f's. Theta not equal to theta prime means the f's are different. Um, these should have like um, common support, not not uh, depending on theta. You know, so the the x's that we're talking about should be the same in all cases. In addition, these functions should have to be uh, three times differentiable uh, with their derivative continuous, and such that if you look at this integral and you. Uh, and you want to take the derivative of this integral with respect to the xi's, well, you can pass the derivative under the integral, and you can do that three times, actually. You can take the third derivative and pass it through the integral. So you can differentiate it under the integral three times, you would say. Um, we want the, uh, the value of theta naught that we're testing against to be in the interior of the, um, of the possible uh, parameter space for my parameter. Um, and finally, we want to know something about the third derivative um, with respect to theta of of the logarithm of um, of these um, of these densities. Um, what we want to know is that um, you know if we're if we're given um, you know you know for so given some theta naught, then um, there exists some epsilon such that if theta minus theta naught is less than or equal to epsilon, then this thing is uniformly bounded by um, by some uh, 
value depending on x, some, some function of x. So, um, so the kind of density doesn't, um, doesn't kind of vary too wildly in, in some sense as the, um, as the, um, as the theta changes, this, this, these third derivatives don't, uh, of the, of the logarithm have, um, have bounded, have bounded, um, size kind of locally, uh, for, for small changes in the, in the parameter theta, the bound, um, has to be this, this function M, which should have the property that the expected value for that kind of central value of the parameter, um, theta prime, um, of, this um, of this function should um, this this should have a finite expectation, and um, yeah, so that's what general means. Um, but you know, it's like I mean, you know, a, a lot of these you know density functions and these uh, uh, you know with and their dependence on these parameters are sufficiently nice. I mean, these things tend to decay pretty, pretty well. I mean, I'm not saying this always works, but you know, um, for, for very general classes of, uh, of distributions and parameters, this, this works. Okay. But, um, but still it's kind of magical, you know, for under these particular hypotheses, um, this, um, this, uh, likelihood ratio estimator, uh, statistic, which is kind of hard to work with, uh, for big N this, you know, negative twice its logarithm looks like a chi squared with one degree of freedom. All right. Um, so that's all we have for now. And I will see you next time.